Hey, everybody, welcome back to another wonderful episode of Profiting with Nonprofits, the nonprofit marketing podcast that takes a deeper dive into the world of nonprofit marketing and more. Yeah, I said nonprofit marketing twice, but that's okay because it's so nice we had to say it twice. And in this in this show, we're going to be talking a lot about nonprofit marketing because we're sitting down with a very special guest today, Jordana Merkin, who is the founder of Voice for Good, a mission-driven marketing agency for nonprofits. So we're going to be talking a lot about nonprofit marketing and messaging, communication, and all sorts of other things to be able to enable your organization to nail it and scale it. But before we dive into the show, I just want to make mention that this podcast is proudly sponsored by GiveSuite. If you see behind me, if you're watching this on the video or you're listening to this, GiveSuite is our software solution for nonprofits, an all-in-one system that incorporates all the tools that you need for, with it, for your organization to be able to run and be able to scale without breaking the bank. GiveSuite provides tools for organ small to medium-sized organizations to help them level up on the tech stack and be on equal playing fields as some of the other big names in the, in the industry. If you're looking to learn more about GiveSuite, you can click on the link that is in the show notes and sign up for a demo or for one of our upcoming webinars. You definitely won't want to miss it. And without further ado, no one wants to hear me talk. Let's listen to our guest. Jordana, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. You know, we were back and forth for a bit and, you know, now we're finally here. And it was funny because I, I think I reached out to you on LinkedIn and I said, hey, you look like you do something cool. You want to be on my show? And mm -hmm. I think that's how it happened. But what was funny was I was just on a call with one of our associates, one of our, one of our new sales associates, and I was kind of showing him how to do LinkedIn. And I said, you know, the, the best is just reach out to people and see if they want to be on our podcast, because nobody in the face of the planet, on the history of the planet ever has said no to being on a podcast, because everyone <laughs> wants to be on a podcast. He's like, okay. um, I'm always happy to, you know, spend some time talking about nonprofit marketing communications. So that's, well, that's an, it's an easy yes. <laughs> well, fair enough. So I guess, wh what's your deal? What's your story? How did you get into the space? Like, yeah, absolutely. Why? So, and why? So yeah, I've spent my whole career working in and around nonprofit marketing communications. Um, I was in-house for about a decade at a few different organizations. And uh, the past four years, I've been running my nonprofit consulting business with a focus on messaging. I started, um, you know, right out of college. In college, I was an English major and creative writing and sociology minors. And for me, the center of that Venn diagram was really how to make mass communication feel personal, um, mostly through writing. And so I started in some copywriting internships and advertising and in for-profit, um, but quickly realized that I loved the work, but I needed to be marketing a mission. So from day one of my first full-time job until now, I haven't turned back. That's really cool. And it's true. It's like, I like what you said, you, you were working, you, you're trying to make com the communication more personal because that's what it's all about. And that's what people, I feel like a lot of people miss the boat when it comes to the copy and it comes to the storytelling and it comes to all this, because they're just trying, everyone wants money. The bottom line is everybody wants money, but nobody wants to have the conversation about why they need the money and show people why they need the money. They're just putting out blanket emails and blanket communications telling you what we're doing, but no one cares what you're doing. Show me, talk to me, connect with me. How right. can I be connect on 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 their level? And do you find that a lot of the people that you that come to you for consulting have this problem? Yeah, I think there's a tendency to think about what you know our message and what we want to put out there, uh, which no one is cares totally about fair. you. Uh, right. I mean, it's, it's fair. Um, but yeah, we, we, of course, need to consider the audience always. Um, I always say the golden rule of communication is show me, you know me. Um, and that's really at the heart of everything, right? So if you're doing that, then everything is going to land much more successfully for both, you know, awareness raising and fundraising, um, and really just having a sense of who you're talking to, why they should care, what their values are, what your values are, and how that aligns. Um, because you know your your ideal audience as an organization, your ideal audience should um, align with your values. And so, like really making that clear. Um, and that's why the clear messaging piece is really my focus, because so much of that is focusing on the audience and how you are going to connect with them. 
No, that's truth. And but why do people like feel like they? Why do people fall into that boat of like you know, it to us and this is our this is our message. This is our mission. Like why that? It's kind of like you know, forgetting about who your constituents are, who your audience is, and who you're trying to talk to. Like why do people fall into that? Like fall into that like hole? Yeah, I think I think every you know, and especially a nonprofit, everyone is resource strapped and there's not enough time and there are too many things going on. And it's, you know, it's easier to just talk about what you want to talk about. I mean, as, as humans, right. And interpersonal connections are also sometimes easier, right? Well, I'm going to think about what I want to say and not necessarily about you want to hear. And so, but in mass communication, especially, you know, it's, it's harder to think that, you know, all the faces who you may or may not know on your email list, let's say, you know, what really makes them tick, what are their, you know, we think, a lot in terms of demographics with our audience work, but really we need to th be thinking in terms of psychographics. So that's what are their beliefs? What are their values? What are what makes them tick? And again, how does that align with the beliefs and values of the organization and really focus on that messaging? That's also how you're going to grow your audience because it's hard for nonprofit leaders to hear that their mission isn't for everyone. I think that's also why they tend to focus on their message and not what people necessarily want to hear because it feels limiting to say, well, I'm just going to have a broad message that appeals to everybody. But there's really no such thing as a broad message that appeals to everybody. No. And the more clear you can be about who you're for and also who you're not for, um, you know, the better your messaging will land. No, and I've had this conversation with people too, where they think that, you know, their their organization is the greatest thing since sliced bread and everybody should jump on the bandwagon. I'm like, hey, to break it to you, buddy, but like not everybody cares about what you're doing. And you have right. to understand how to communicate with the people that you're trying to get money from. You have to understand on their level how they want to be spoken to, what they're looking to hear. And this is something that we do a lot with email marketing, is we write email sequences that talk to people. One of my favorite, one of our highest converting sequences that we did with one client, and then we kind of um, replicated that to every everybody else, is meet the heroes. Is that you know everybody, every nonprofit from the janitor to the executive director is has, has some sort of special purpose and why they're working for the organization. And we've created these email sequences highlighting people within organizations, you know, getting to know the people behind the behind the curtain, getting to know people behind the day-to-day. And people love reading about this because they hear real stories from real people and they open and then they can they give money because like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, there's actually real people here. So yeah. you know it, it, people it, give to people. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and when you, when you realize that and you tool your communications towards that, you will see a significant increase in your revenues. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. I think, and, you know, and that still is about you, right. As the organization, you're, you're talking about yourself, but you're doing it in a way that connects with other people. So just always considering that audience when putting out your message is, is really crucial. Yeah. It's it's just repackaging how you're how you're showing show, showing people showing people you, mm -hmm. and in in terms of like the stuff that you do, and let you know a lot of people say marketing communications. What what's the difference between marketing communications? Yeah, it's a great question. So you know, as I said, I've worn all of the marketing communications hats at several different nonprofits, and that means a lot of different things. Um, and so, you know, when I first started my business, I was like, well, I'm, I, I have done all the things I can do all the things let's, let's, you know, have that broad umbrella term of marketing. Um, you know, the farther I've gotten in my business, my focus is really on the messaging piece and the communications piece. So it's, how are you going to be clear about what you do, why it matters and who should care about it? Um, and then how are you going to communicate that out? There are, you know, yes, obviously a lot of pieces to, to, to marketing, but that area is, is really my focus. For sure. And, and what, what do you find is one of the better means of communication? Like, and especially now when everyone's on their phones, are you a big proponent of SMS marketing and, and message, multi-channel messaging marketing, or are you still into email? Like, where do you, where do you see the trends going? with this and because I'm a big fan of SMS marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think you've got to do a, a lot of things, right. Which is part of the challenge. Um, 
I, I always, you know, when I work on communication strategy with an organization, I, my goal is always to make it realistic for that organization. So you can't do all the things and be in all the places at once, right? But I do think, you know, and multi-channel approach is is important. So, uh, but again, that depends, as we've been saying, on your audience, right? So, um, so yes, I think SMS marketing is is an important piece. Social media is an important piece, but it does not mean being on every channel every day. Um, yeah. And so, right, so really thinking about where you want to be, where your people are, and what's going to be, um, you know, the ease of use factor again, because we all at nonprofits, you know, everyone has limited time and resources. So what's going to be realistic and also have an impact? Um, and then certainly email, um, because that's, you know, that's you own those lists. Those are your people. And, you know, building that is really crucial. I also am still a big fan of print. So, oh. you know, so budget is a little different for print, but I think Do explain. We're, we're considering multi-channel, um, you know, direct mail still works and getting a postcard in the mail is effective when you're hitting up all the different pieces. So again, depends on your audience and your relationship with them, but it's something that I always like to consider at least, um, you know, maybe not for everyone on your list, but for people again, to really make that mass communication personal. Um, you know, we live in the age of the Jetsons and so the Flintstones are really going to stand out. So I'm, I think it's always I like that. I like that. <laughs> No, because it's funny what you said about like, you know, not every channel is a uh, platform is ideal for an organization. I talk about this a lot too. I have several videos on our YouTube channel all about that. If you guys want to watch, if you guys haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, the Nonprofit Academy, go out there, check it out. Um, and I, I've talked about this with clients before. It's like, just you don't, just because everybody else is on TikTok does not mean that your organization needs to be on TikTok, but why not? Like, it's like, do you, are your people hanging out on TikTok watching people dance? No, they're not. No, you know, just because everyone's on Instagram. I mean, it's good to have these things just to diversify, but to put your, to, you know, just to put all your energy into certain things, you know, you have to understand your audience. And I realized this I went years ago, each social media platform has its own like elements to it, has its own flavor to it. And people will react differently on different platforms. Same with texting, email, like you said, direct mail. Like I feel like direct mail, you're probably going more towards the older demographic of people who are still looking at their mail and saying, oh, hey, that's cool, you know, mm -hmm. versus the the younger gener demographics of people who are on Instagram, who are on TikTok, who are, you know, on the, even Facebook, you know, Facebook is more of an older demographic type of crowd, depending mm -hmm. on what you're doing. And so I feel like, but it's also having the right messaging that goes on each different element. Like right. you wouldn't put the same message that you would put on Instagram that you would on a piece of direct mail because it's right. just not going to make sense. Right. Yeah. Different. I would, well, you might strike a different tone, but I am all for repurposing. Um, oh, so, totally. Right. So I would say you don't need to reinvent the wheel each time, which I still feel like I hear too often that like, oh, well, we already posted this on Facebook. So we need something different for Instagram. And I'm like, no, you really don't. Like you need to maybe oh, format yeah. it differently. Maybe maybe yeah. about the, the content of the post, but definitely sharing the same, it's... the same things across channels, because that's also, you know, that makes your message stronger if people are hearing the same message in multiple places. Um, but sure. yeah, each channel definitely has its own flavor and really getting to know how that's going to work, but also getting to know what you are going to put the time and effort into in a way that makes sense to you, right? So again, it's that meeting of what can you realistically do and where is your audience? Because um, both have to be factors that are considered. No, for sure. And I mean, it, what she said also, like, is that, you know, repurposing the content, I'm all for that. I mean, this is why I love podcasts. You get like four pieces of content out of, out of one 25 minute recording. Right. And then, but at the same time with social posts, you can, you can take what you wrote on Facebook tweak it a drop for Instagram with a different call to action and different and a different type of picture and then put the hashtags for reach what mm. you what you wouldn't do you know with with Facebook you you'd right. have the same similar post but have a have a link for call to action to drive people to do what you want them to do it's mm -hmm. more of a direct call to action where Instagram is more of a passive call to action because eventually they'll take take note and do mm. what you want them to do right and 
people don't realize that is that but the one thing that really peeves me though is, is when i do see people take the same post and post it like literally copy and paste the same thing with the hashtags with everything and it's like yeah it, it, it it's not gonna work buddy it's just yeah. not gonna work yeah it's important to have that that understanding of the nuances um again without driving yourself crazy but just yeah basic things like you can't put a link in an instagram post you know things like that um but Meta actually allows you, you know, if you're posting pretty much the same post to both, you can do it directly in in their native tool to, you know, make them different for your Facebook and Instagram. So um, it's definitely doable. Um, but yeah, just having those that that basic knowledge is, is important. Yeah, for sure. So I guess um, my my question to you before we kind of wrap this up is. What when you got into this, what were you thinking about getting, when you started this whole consultancy? And then, what advice would you give to somebody who's looking to get into nonprofit consulting and nonprofit communications and marketing? Because, as I always say, marketing is like marketing is a very gray word, gray area. Mm-hmm. People like to throw a lot of stupid into marketing, mm-hmm. you know? and so I always ask this question mm-hmm. to people: what What advice would you give to someone yeah, who wants to get into great the, question. the space? <laughs> Right. So as I said, I was in-house for a decade. So definitely start there. Um, You know, working at a few different organizations, um, you know, you learn a lot um, about about marketing and communications and about nonprofit and all the different areas of nonprofit in addition to all the different areas of marketing communication. You know, without that foundation, I would not be able to build my consulting business. but in general, I think when building a consulting business or when when in-house, um, I think it's important to stay curious um, and to keep learning. Um, you know, I tell I tell my kids when they say, well, grownups know everything. And I'm like, no one knows everything, right? Because we're always, we always have to keep learning and, you know, pushing ourselves to stay curious. And that humility is how you learn. Um, you know, even I, I've been doing this for you know, quite some time and that they're still always, you know, first of all, things always change if we're talking about social media or, you know, things like that. So staying on top of current trends, but then also just learning the ins and outs of things by asking questions. Um, so I guess that's ask a lot of questions would be my advice. Cool. 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 Well, this was really fun having you on the show. I'm happy we finally got down to it and yeah. you gave a lot of deep insight. And I think a lot of people are going to listen to, we get a lot of listeners, so they all, I'm, I'm sure they're going to benefit from it. Um, my only question to you is how do people find you? Where are you hanging out? <laughs> so uh, my social media platform of choice is LinkedIn. So I'm happy to connect there, Jordana Merkin. Um, I also have a website, moosforgoodmarketing.com. Um, so I have some freebies on there that people are welcome to download to get started with their messaging. Um, and um, yeah, happy, happy to connect. My, my other random quick question is, I love the name of your company, Voice for Good. How'd that happen? Thank you. Uh Lots and lots and lots of lists of other options that I got rid of. Really, I, I've i spent a lot of time in the disability and special needs spaces in the nonprofit world. And really in life, my own personal value is to really give everyone a voice and to make sure that everyone is heard. And I work primarily with smaller organizations who don't have their own marketing communications person to amplify their voice. So my goal in my business is to help them amplify their voice and to do it for good. So that's voice for good. Cool. 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 Well, thank you so much for Dana for coming on the show. I'm going to drop her contact information in the show notes for everybody who wants to reach out to her. I think you should, because she's just awesome. And if, and like I said, if anybody's looking to get a demo of give suite, the link will be in the show notes as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our podcast and all major podcasting platforms, because the more you do it, gives me more motivation to bring on more cool guests, which I do every single week. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Nonprofit Academy, for all your marketing and messaging and information out there. So until next week, guys, I will catch you all on the next upload. And have if, you, if you're listening to this episode this week, happy 4th of July. <laughs>